welcome to Atlanta Motor Speedway, one of the fastest tracks in NASCAR. The fans a year ago saw a fantastic finish. It came down to one lap and two veterans. I remember I went into turn three with one hand on the steering wheel and tightened my belts up. And I knew that it was either going to be a wreck or a win for an awfully close race. And uh, I was not going to settle for second unless I just absolutely had to. It's a great cat and mouse game between these two. Mike's just a hard racer. Bobby was equally as hungry. Side by side, Kelly Collier is wide open. It's Bobby Hamilton, Mike Skinner, and Bobby Hamilton will win the Easy Care 200. And I'm just going to go to the bottom and let him, let him have all outside he can stand. And I'm done. He drove it off in there. I mean, he he passed us on the outside and made it made it a good pass. And when I come out, took the air off of him, it turned him, and he turned back right and hit me. And I was prepared for that. I just stayed in the gas, and next thing I know, I'm going straight again. I look in the mirror, and I see smoke everywhere. Oh, what a finish! I can remember the fans. When I come back around there, the place was a stack. And, you know, people didn't leave for the longest. We'd done victory lane. People wouldn't even leave. It was a heck of a finish. I think that was a good mark for the truck series. the second time the trucks have raced at this extremely fast mile and a half Atlanta and the fans are expecting another action-packed race. Speed Channel's coverage of the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series pre-race show is presented by Craftsman. Normally a very warm area Atlanta Georgia only 48 degrees as we get ready for the third race under the lights for the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. Take a look at the four top 10 point standings. Bobby Hamilton, very consistent. A win at Daytona, second at California, also consistent. Ultra Motorsports, Jimmy Spencer and Ted Musgrave, third and fourth. Steve Park moves to sixth after his win in our last race at California. And hello, everyone. I'm Rick Allen alongside of Phil Parsons and Michael Walter. Now, we've had some rules changes that have taken place, and those rules changes took place because of what happened at Daytona two races ago. Rick, we had a pretty couple couple pretty serious situations at Daytona. First, Rick Crawford's truck got airborne coming off turn four. You see a little bump there. Watch his truck. Air gets on it, underneath it, turns it over, back on its wheels, fortunately. Then later in the race, we're going to see the 30 truck of Chad Shepard. Very similar situation. Air-induced rollover. So NASCAR felt like they needed to do something. They actually took a truck to the wind tunnel and they end up putting side skirts just like the next all cup cars have underneath the sides of these trucks you see them right there right below the blue there right below the tailpipes that's a side skirt that will help keep air from getting underneath the truck they also enlarged the cowl flaps they made them almost twice as big as they used to be that will allow air to escape from underneath the truck that air that is underneath the truck so these two things did a did a tremendous amount to keep these trucks from hopefully from getting up in the air if they have another situation like that. So another safety issue being corrected by NASCAR. Now, Rick Crawford had a wild ride at Daytona, but he also had a wild ride here a year ago, Michael. Oh, wow, this place is fast, Rick. This place is fast and it's furious. Things happen so quickly that you hardly have time to react. Watch Rick Crawford right here. He's coming down the back straightaway. This is the truck that gets loose. She spins out, stops her truck right in the middle of the road. Look, Rick, he doesn't even know what happened. Boom, there she sits. Hits that truck, his throttle hangs. He crashed in the middle of the back straightaway. Three quarters of a mile later, he finally came to a stop on the front straightaway. That tells you the tremendous amount of speed that is developed here. And uh, when you have speed, you have action. And uh, the finish last year illustrates what kind of good action you can have. That wreck shows you how action can go the wrong way in a hurry. And Rick Crawford's trying to improve upon last year's race and hopefully have a better finish. Well, he's obviously going to have a better start because he is our pole sitter. And standing by with him is Wendy Venerini. Thanks, Rick. It's been 53 races since Rick Crawford sat on the pole tonight. He'll start from the top spot for the third time in his career. Rick, last year Bobby Hamilton won this race running the high line around the track. Is that going to be your strategy or what kind of groove are you looking for tonight? We were looking at a race trim this morning in practice, which the temperature was as, probably not as cool as it was this, right now, but uh, track temperature favored this condition this morning. So um, we tried to mill it track, and everything was working out pretty good. But 
I look at it like uh, wherever that truck's fast, that's where I'm going to run. So uh, we'll take, try to take care of it and have some for the end. All right, good luck to you tonight. Let's check back in with Rick Allen. Well, Rick Crawford would like to get back into victory lane again, as did Steve Park from last race. Steve Park joined an elite group. Only 10 drivers have ever won in all three of the top series of NASCAR. Steve Park put his name on that list in our last race of California when he got that win. His first win in the Bush Series came in 1997 at Nashville. He claimed three wins in that series. And then in the Cup Series, he got his first win in 2000 at Watkins Glen. But probably his most memorable win came in 2001 at Rockingham when he won just after Dale Earnhardt passed away. Standing by with Steve Parks, Ray Dunlap. Well, thank you, Rick. You know, the most memorable win is always the most recent one. Congratulations on that great win at California, but what an emotional roller coaster ride this sport can take you on. Tell me about this weekend. Well, actually, I'm sitting here in Atlanta. I'm actually trying to find a bank <laughs> to cash this check from Mobile One. Pretty happy about that. But it was. It was emotional. I mean, it's been three years coming, and uh, you know, to, to close the book of uh, being hurt and come back and win the races again it is a big weight off my shoulders and I'm just happy about that I mean I've been through a lot the last three years and uh, you know tired of hearing people saying that we can't win and you know now what are they gonna say you know now now that we won that you know we just need to do it again and getting and again I mean it's a performance based business and we need to perform and that's uh, you know if you're racing bicycles cars or trucks you need to do it okay good luck tonight Steve Park will start 26 but guys the most important story about Steve Park is the fact that his teammate will not be in tonight's race We'll tell you about more of that after we get back from this commercial break. Speed Channel's coverage of NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series pre-race show is brought to you by Craftsman, celebrating 10 years top of the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. Welcome back to Atlanta Motor Speedway. As we get ready for the Atlanta 200, let's get kicked off with our pre-race activities going down for our invocation and national anthem. And now, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, will you please rise and remove your hats as the Lovejoy High School Air Force Junior ROTC presents our nation's colors. And now, please welcome Atlanta Motor Speedway Chaplain Bill Brannon as he delivers tonight's invocation. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight for the privilege of living in this great nation where we have the right to pray, for enjoying this sport where we have the privilege to pray, and for serving a God who hears us when we pray, in Jesus' name, amen. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing and welcome country music singer and songwriter Phil Vassar as he performs our national anthem. Oh, say. Phil Vassar with a spectacular rendition of the national anthem and a spectacular crowd on hand at Atlanta Motor Speedway. We're under the lights again for the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, and obviously the stars will come out. Atlanta Motor Speedway, the site of one of the greatest finishes 
in the Craftsman Truck Series. We'll see if they can equal that tonight. Truck Series World Financial Group 200 on Speed Channel. A year ago, Bobby Hamilton won in extremely exciting fashion at Atlanta Motor Speedway, but it's been a hard road to get where he's at today. Uh, he lived with his grandfather all his life. He just didn't. He didn't live with my grandmother and grandfather, he just didn't. We slept in cars. We got a job at a gas station, slept in the back of U-Haul trucks for a year and a half. I was a rough character. And there's people that will see this like, oh yeah, he's a rough character. And I mean, I can remember nights at that record company, that one guy stuck a 45 pistol between my eyes and was pulling the trigger, and I had to hit him to keep him, I was hoping he'd just blow the side of my head off instead of the front of it. People thought, well, he, he's not going to never make it in racing because the way he dresses or whatever, you know, or my hair was long or whatever. You know something? I couldn't afford to get my hair cut. Hamilton comes across the start finish line as your 2004 champion. And I think going through all the things I went through actually probably made me the type of person I am. Bobby Hamilton is a NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series champion. I've become a very... Uh, self-satisfied person where before I was a very uh, selfish person in a lot of ways if you just make yourself happy that's what it's about That was a small piece of the big story that was featured on NASCAR Nation this past week. NASCAR Nation airing Monday through Thursday, 7 p.m. only on Speed Channel. We're about to get underway, and to do that, let's go down track side for tonight's command. And now, race fans, please welcome back our Grand Marshal, Phil Vassar, for those most famous words in motorsports. Drivers! Start your engine! Bill Vassar electrifying the crowd tonight and getting the engines fired up for the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. World Financial Group 200 coming up next on Speed. Speed Channel's coverage of NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series Atlanta 200 on Speed Channel is brought to you by Craftsman. Celebrating 10 years tough of the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. And by Ford, the official truck of NASCAR. As the trucks get ready to roll out onto this just over a mile and a half track, let's take a look at the Craftsman track description. Rick, this is the most fun you want to have driving a race vehicle. These guys put on that finish last year. It's not a coincidence. You can look for the same thing tonight. It's a mile and a half in length. The corners are banked 24 degrees, a lot of bank. You can run high, you can run low. The front stretch is longer than the back stretch. That means if your truck's not good on the bottom end, maybe you'll get it wind up on the other end and come off stronger. You can't ask for any more fun than you'll see here at Atlanta. Let's take a look at the Craftsman Race Analysis. 36 trucks starting, 130 laps, a little bit over 200 miles. The purse just under a half a million dollars, and our pit window is anywhere from 55 to 60 laps. We take a look at the Domino starting grid. Rick Crawford claims his third career pole as he will start on the inside with a new track record. 
over 182 miles an hour. Shane Meal on the outside of him. So it's a veteran front row as opposed to a rookie front row as we had last year. Keep an eye out on Johnny Benson. Start outside row second. He had a very good truck in practice. David Rudiman set on the pole here last year and ran third. He was a raw rookie. Now he's got a little bit of experience. It'll be interesting to see if Rudiman can run to the front. There's Dennis Setzer outside row number seven. He won two races last year on mile and a half racetracks, Charlotte and Texas. Bobby Labonte, very good at Atlanta Motor Speedway. He starts on the inside of row 10. Did you know you could call Domino's and get three medium-sized pizzas for $5? Five dollars five, five, five special? I was hoping you would inform me of that, and thank you. There's our most recent winner. Steve Park starts outside row number 13 in the Orleans Dodge. Kelly Sutton, a solid run. I mean, that's a, that's a lot of speed. Kelly Sutton shows that she knows what she's doing behind the wheel of that truck. Take a look at who missed the field, those that didn't make this, and probably a name that will stick out the most is eight-time winner in the Craftsman Truck Series, Brendan Gaughan. Now, the reason for this, we had a rules change that took place this year where the top 30 in points, owner's points, from last year are locked into the field. And since Brendan Gaughan did not run the 77, and the 77 was not running in the trucks a year ago, he had no owner's points and had to race to get in when he was not one of the six that made that field. And you know, when Brendan came to Atlanta, he knew what the rules were. He was confident he could race his way into the field, wasn't able to do it. That just shows you how tough the competition is in this NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. We'll ride along with a few different drivers in the Morgan Dollar number 47. Bobby Labonte will start 19. I drove that truck got last Phil, year. Got Phil Vassar on the side of it. There's Jimmy Spencer. What a great second place run this year at Daytona. Thought he actually won the race, went to victory lane. He starts 17th in the team ASC Dodge. Up ahead of Spencer, there, that's Robert Huffman driving DW's truck. He's in one of the Toyotas, and Robert's looking really impressive this year, off to a good start. We'll ride along with the Power Stroke Diesel by International number 10 of Terry Cook. Terry Cook's going to start sixth in this race, so he'll have a little better shot at getting up to the front quickly. Uh, but a, a very strange, I guess, starting uh, situation in that the Toyotas dominated the top ten today. Well, they sure did. Uh, the Toyotas are very strong here. They've got a lot of horsepower, and they've got the trucks really hooked up to this racetrack. One guy who would love to win this race and win the Craftsman win from the Pole Award is Rick Crawford. If he does so, he'll win $6,000 for his team. Now, if he doesn't win, $2,000 continues to be added each race until we get to the final race. And, you know, you said Toyotas dominated the top ten. But who's on the front row of Ford and the Chevy? So uh, I would rather be first and not dominate than not, not be on the pole. Rick Crawford's got a chance to win $6,000 because of the Craftsman wins from the pole contest. I'm sure he's pretty happy about that right now. Trucks warming up the tires, getting ready to get underway this race. Again, 130 laps, 200 miles, so relatively quick in terms of, of races and relatively quick in terms of locations as well. Wow, I just, uh, I hope if you are sitting at home, you've tuned into speed, you're going to check out these trucks racing, you understand, I'm giddy, you know, I get that way, but this is as much fun as you want to see. These guys will be running field from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen to the corner. All kinds of opportunities to make passes. And Michael, this is now the fastest track that the truck series runs. They qualified actually faster than they did at Daytona back in February, so this is the fastest track on the circuit. And did you see them just flipping over at Daytona? because they were going so fast. They're going faster here. So don't 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 count out anything. You're, don't tell them what you're liable to see. Well, the safety issues that they changed NASCAR, hopefully they'll uh, definitely stay on their wheels tonight. Let's go down trackside to Ray. Well, thank you, Rick. The Craftsman Truck Series teams always have four sets of tires. They have what's on the truck that they qualified with and three sets here in the pit area. But normally one of these sets has a lot of use on them from practice. But NASCAR did something different this week. You could turn in your practice tires and get a brand new set of fresh stickers. So many of these teams have three sets of stickers tonight, and I think you'll see an awful lot of them try to use all three. Wendy? Ray Talks Tires, I'm going to talk injuries. One driver that's going to have a very long night is Jack Sprague. He starts 23rd, but remember, folks, he has a fractured left heel. He's wearing a special brace tonight made out of carbon fiber. They also had another injury on their team from their rear tire changer. Will not be going over the wall tonight. He had knee replacement surgery. So guess who comes out of retirement? Crew chief Chris Showalter will be going over the wall tonight for Jack Sprague. Injuries galore for the 16 team. That injury took place just before the California race. He had to obviously get out of the truck, and Mike Bliss hopped in. Rick, I, lo I love looking at the top seven in points. It's six established cup veterans that have won races on the cup level. They've, they've come to the truck series now. 
not a whole a lot of surprise there. Those guys have gravitated toward the front. Another guy, though, in the top seven in points is Matt Crafton. He just visited pit road. We'll start last. We got to get down to our guys on pit road. To figure out what the heck happened. He had an engine change after qualifying, so he was going to start last anyway. So they may have been buttoning up some final, making some final adjustments to that truck because he probably had a limited amount of time to do that engine change. Uh, it had to make him nervous, though. He's down there on pit road when the, <laughs> when the field's coming around to take a green flag. But he's caught up to the field. You saw he and Tracy Hines. Tracy was on pit road as well. They're going to start in the back. It'll be interesting to see those guys in great trucks, having great seasons racing their way to the front. Rick Crawford comes to the start finish line. The green flag flies and we're underway in Atlanta. And Mike Skinner make it three wide on the bottom of the racetrack. How's that going to work out? Not too well. Oh, Mike Skinner man. checks up Rick Crawford just in front of him. Shane Neal jumps out to the point early on. <laughs> that was an aggressive move by Skinner. What did he? He about turned the 14 around. Turn one of lap one. That just tells you what the truck series is all about. These guys will race that way from now to the end. And remember, Phil, they're going to be approaching 190 miles an hour when they shoot down into the turn. The thing about Daytona, they qualified at about 182 miles an hour. Well, they probably only ran 184, 185 at the end of the straightaway. As you mentioned here, at least 190 miles an hour as they drive off on these corners. Now, I flipped over at Daytona last year when I wrecked, but I think I'd rather wreck at Daytona than Atlanta. This place is just scary fast. When something goes wrong, it always seems to be big. And it's the angles, too, because the turns are a lot sharper. And the reason these trucks are running so fast here, they, didn't, they do not have any restrictions whatsoever. Look at Bobby Hamilton. We saw him do this last year. He went right to the top of the racetrack right away last year and ended up winning a race from the top of the racetrack. And He's I, already up there. I can't tell you, Phil. I was just on this track in cup qualifying, cup practice. You can't, that's hard to do. You know, your truck will run well up there, but you have to have a great handling truck to be able to move up to the top and make moves around the trucks that he's doing right now. Look for this truck to go straight to the front. And Michael, we really didn't talk about it. Bobby Hamilton started this race 36th. He did not run fast enough to qualify in the top 36. He got it used a champion's provisional to start this race basically last other than the two trucks that pitted on the caution laps. And Phil, after two laps, he was shown as 18. So made up 18 spots in two laps. And this is a cat that everybody would say would be a veteran, an older guy. And he, he passed half the field in two, you know, in two laps. He's driving around guys. That's Todd Cleaver. Down on the bottom. Look at Bobby's line. Look how much different it is than the guys he's running around. Right and watch the top. Michael, watch him pass both those trucks in one corner. Not to mention that he cleared Cleaver on the back straightaway. Who's next? Ricky Craven. Where'd Craven qualify? He was in the top 10. Hamilton was near last. Craven qualifies 11th, Hamilton 36th, and here goes Hamilton trying to put Craven behind him. A lot of the crew chiefs in the garage area asked me when I thought that, that Bobby Hamilton would go to the top of the racetrack. I said, probably about lap number two, but I think he did it in lap number one. I, I can't even fathom what he's doing right now, Phil. That's a difficult line to get your truck set up for. He obviously had a lot of confidence, Bobby Hamilton did, in practice in running that line knowing that that's what his truck wanted to do when the race started. And he was the only Craftsman Truck Series driver that got up to the top of the racetrack in practice. Everybody else stayed right in the bottom of the racetrack. Bobby, both practice sessions, got up to the top to see what his truck did, and he adjusted for it and looking at passing trucks. Wow, what an impressive start to a race by Bobby Hamilton. You would have to think right now, after what he's doing, you would have to just almost say he's going to win the race. How do you... How do you pass half the field in just uh, two or three laps and not think you're going to win? Well, they get harder to pass as you get <laughs> closer to the front. So we'll see if Bobby Hamilton can make his way up to the front. He starts at the back of the field. Bobby Hamilton already up to 12. Shane Neal is still your leader. Welcome back to the third race of the season, the Atlanta 200 at Atlanta Motor Speedway. While we were away, Mike Skinner jumped in front of Shane Neal, so a lead change. Take a look at it. Mike Skinner draft behind Shane Neal. He pulls over to the inside. Shane says, hey, I know you're obviously a little bit faster than me right now. I'm going to pull over, back off, let you lead along. Now, you remember in the first couple of races this year, Phil, Kerry uh, Earnhardt was behind the wheel of that number 15 truck. They got some sponsorship for this race with Shane Neal driving, so Kerry stepped aside. Shane's in the truck because they have sponsorship from uh, several different Atlanta-based companies that have jumped on board Billy Blue's truck to give Shane a chance to uh, 
Shane a chance to win this race. It looks like he's taking advantage of it. Sure is. I talked to Billy and Richie Waters, the crew chief, before the race, and they think Shane's going to run this truck some. They're not sure exactly what they're going to do yet when uh, the trucks go off on their standalone races, when the Bush Series that Shane Real, Shane Meal runs regularly is, is racing somewhere else. But uh, they've got a great truck here. They were so competitive last year. Shane had that big win last year in Las Vegas, so they're really looking to get that thing back on top. And another, uh, another thing that happened during the break, Bobby Hamilton's huge charge to the front stalled out. Like you said, when you get up toward the top 10, trucks become more and more uh, difficult to pass. He's running in 10th right now and has pretty much uh, lost all of his momentum. That's his teammate right there. That's Casey Atwood. He's driving the four truck and uh, he's marred back in the 26th position battling with uh, Matt Crafton who's in the top 10 in points but got got a, had an engine change and, and uh, had to start in the rear. That's Jimmy Kite the 06. That's his first ever this is his first ever Craftsman Truck Series start. Now he's a veteran of the Indianapolis 500. He's made four starts in Indianapolis 500. So he's used to going fast, but he's doing a, done a great job getting in this field. As we mentioned earlier, Brendan Gone, an uh, eight time winner in the Craftsman Truck Series, was not able to make this race. And Jimmy Kite did qualify his way in this field. Now, is, how old is uh, Jimmy Kite? Is he 12 or 13? I mean, he, he is a tiny person and, and he looks like he's just a kid. What is he now? 76. 29. 29. Well, shoot, I guess I missed that one. I thought but he was well, small. Or 13, I think. <laughs> but he is relatively small in stature, yes. Riding along with the Team ASC Dodge of Jimmy Spencer. Spencer currently in 12th position, and right in front of it, Bobby Hamilton, the guy on the high side. And we watched Bobby charge around Ricky Craven on lap two or three, and there goes Ricky back by him. And I, I, I shouldn't have said he was... I, I like Jimmy Kite a lot. I appreciate his ability. He, he he was driving that Indianapolis car running like 220 when he looked like he was 10. So I just I'm surprised that he's uh, that he's 29 years old. He'll, he's probably a black belt or something that's going to find me in what my rear end. Actually, very nice young man. So I don't think you have to worry about that. I think you would appreciate you thinking that he looks young. Well, as he gets older, he will. And, and so maybe it'll take him a few years to appreciate what I just said. But then then he will. Hopefully, in the meantime, he won't try to whoop me. There's his truck, the 06. Running solid so far, just got in the show, like you said, and Brendan Gaughan couldn't, so that tells you a little bit about, uh, like I said earlier, Todd Cleaver's on pit road, too. Feel off to a terrible start in Daytona. Rebounded well the next the next week, but uh, now he's on pit road. Todd Cleaver's California finish, fourth, so a great rebound, and now problems for that number 50 as they stop and go, more or less. Saw a lot of steam coming out of, uh, of the overflow. It looked like he may have been overheating. He probably had to come in, pull a little tape off uh, the front end. See, see that right there, the overflow points right to the windshield. So Todd is avail uh, aware of the thing overheating without having to look at his water temperature gauge. But I don't think they did much uh, much help. They're probably going to have to come in and put a little water in that thing. Well, wow, it's burnt some water out of it. Here's Jimmy Spencer down on the inside of Bobby Hamilton. We saw Jimmy behind Bobby the last time we saw these trucks. So Jimmy's making a move. As you mentioned, Bobby Hamilton's progress is stalled here, and he's actually losing a position or two uh, in the last few laps. But you know, Phil, my experience with driving these cars these days on the radial tires, if you've got a car that'll haul the mail for a lap or two, yeah, it's going to fade. You're not going to be able to keep that kind of pace. What's Bobby doing? Bobby slowed way down, went to the inside of the track. Jimmy Spencer got by him, as did Ricky Craven. And now Bobby Hamilton looks as though he's going to settle in behind them. We've seen this before. He's okay with just letting a few guys go by until he can get his stuff straight. We saw it at Daytona. He rode around the back of the pack until it came time to make his move, end up winning that race. We saw the same thing at, Los, at uh, California. We said, hey, you can't do the same thing at California that he did at Daytona. He ended up finishing second. So never count out Bobby Hamilton. Ever. I learned a valuable lesson at California. <laughs> California and I talked to him the next day after that race and I said man I'm sorry I had you counted out of that thing he said I don't pay any attention to what you people say up there in that booth Friday along with Bobby Labonte Bobby Labonte currently being shown in 16th position but it's Mike Skinner out in front of Shane Mio Sunday, tune into NASCAR this morning, the hottest pre-race show in the business. Host John Roberts is joined by Truck Series driver Jimmy Spencer and Bush Series driver Kenny Wallace. You can get the inside story before the race. 
features and the latest coming out of the garage. Again, that's NASCAR this morning, 11 a.m. on Sunday. Mike Skinner putting a Shigiatori a lap down now as he settles into his groove after 25 laps of racing. There's Steve Park, last time out and won the race at California Speedway. This time, unfortunately, he's got some pretty major issues under the hood. They came in, changed tires, and then opened the hood, and uh, obviously something wrong with the engine. We'll go down trackside and right. Well, guys, it's an ignition problem for the Orleans Dodge here. They believe that they may have cracked the distributor cap. Steve said coming off the corner, it just quit. So they have got the hood up there, and now they're on their way to go behind the wall to work on it. Steve Park, one of the drivers in the top 10 right now, and so this could help, could definitely hurt him with the points. Wendy? Overheating problems for Todd Cleaver. You see his truck is pulled behind the wall, and the culprit of this overheating is this tear-off right here. Came off a windshield and caused the truck to overheat. They came in, took the tear-off off, but the overheating problem did not go away, so the truck came back in. There's water coming out of the pipe, so they decided to do more investigating on the truck and try and get this truck fixed to get back out there. Now, Phil, obviously that thing flew on the front of the truck. The spotter couldn't see it. No one mentioned to Todd that uh, maybe he should check his temperatures. And Todd, being a rookie, this place is intimidating. You're running 190 mile an hour down into the corner. You're pretty much trying to drive your truck. Maybe the temperature got up higher than he thought it did, or, or he didn't notice it going up and uh, burnt the thing up. Well, Michael, what I want to know is where did the tear-off come from? I mean, well, you, we've had some practice here, but people wouldn't really have been doing any tear-offs. We haven't had any pit stops yet here in the Craftsman Truck Series, so there shouldn't be any tear-offs on the racetrack. But, but, Phil, as you race these trucks in and beside each other, they leave such a huge wake of air behind them. You're liable just to make a move from the outside to ins inside of someone. It'll rip one of your tear-offs off. It'll fly right off your car or truck, whatever you're racing, and you won't even know why it happened. A lot of traffic right here as Shane Meal currently being shown in second. Todd Bodine in the 66 is just taking over third, and there is a slew of trucks in one area right now. That Todd Bodine, is a, he, is, he has just proven week in and week out that he'll drive the heck out of one of these trucks and get it to the front. Chad Chaffin actually got by Todd Bodine. Chad's driving the 30 Toyota. He moved up to the third position. He was running fifth. Rick Crawford is back from third back to fifth now, and Todd up to fourth from fifth. I mean, he's, he's staying fourth. He got by Chad Chaffin for, for a moment, but got hung up in that major traffic we were talking about, and Chad Chaffin was able to get by to take over the third position. What, what Phil's saying, a lot of stuff, uh, really a lot of stuff happened right there in just a short period of time. You could always keep your eye on the scroll that goes across the top to find out where your drivers are at. Ray, what's going on with Ray? Well, Rick, if you want to know what's going on on pit road, it's loose, loose, loose. That's what everybody's been saying on the radio, especially Crawford. Crawford said coming off of four, the thing is just flat sideways, so he's very loose. Also heard Bobby Labonte saying that he's extremely loose. Bill Lester and Terry Cook. I see Terry Cook has fallen all the way back below 20th right now after starting in the top five. So everybody on my end of pit road saying very, very loose. Wendy, what's happening on your end? Same here on this end of pit road, Ray. Everybody's loose, especially Shane Meal. He's been loose going in all night long. Johnny Benson, however, said he's losing grip, but he can run on the top or the bottom of the track. Now, also, Chad Chaffin, you saw he paid a lot of spots early in the race. He teamed up with Todd Bodine. They started mid-pack 13th and 16th, and they worked all the worked through traffic to both get up towards the front now. As Wendy was mentioning Shane Meal being loose, I think he went through the entire corner sideways. That, that, that is not right. Watch this truck get sideways. This shows you Shane's ability to, to, to control the vehicle. Watch him. Gets loose entering the corner field. He's tried to stay after it. Look how sideways that thing gets. Now, the thing about it, he held on to it, and he kept going, but he will plummet through the field with a truck handling like that. You can't you can't force that. Just look at Look, Shiggy's going around him. Shiggy about crash going around. Here comes Kelly Sutton. He's coming to pit road. He said he's had all the fun he can stand. He said, give me four tires on here and tighten this thing up. Wendy, what's going on down there? Flat tire on Shane Meal's truck. He's calling also for Wedge in the left rear while he comes in to fix this flat tire. So unexpected pit stop for Shane Meal. The team jumps over the wall. They go to the right side. The flat must be on the right side if you can see it from your end, folks. Right, right rear is flat as you see it come off. They're only going to, they are coming around to the left side doing four tire change on Shane Meal's 
Oh, trouble on the jack now. Unfortunate events here in Shane Beal's pit. Shane Beal started on the outside of the pole. Rick Crawford was on the inside of him when they started this race. Shane Meal led the first eight laps of this race, and now he has trouble. We'll find out how Mike Skinner fares when we come back. As we went to break, I mentioned we'll see how Mike Skinner does. Well, Mike Skinner just hit the wall in turn four. He had lost the lead to Chad Chaffin. Todd Bodine also went by him, but Mike Skinner having troubles. It looked like he might be trying to get onto pit road and problems. He made contact with the outside wall. Not sure what happened. We had a great three wide battle for the lead. Mike Skinner with Chad Chaff and Todd Bodine. Ch uh, Skinner's truck went away in a hurry. He went down into turn three. It looked like he just blew a right front tire. Drove straight up into the wall. Shot to pit road. But still, they went three wide off turn two. These two Toyotas split Skinner. And uh, what a great battle. 66 of Top Odine right now is being shown as a leader. Chad Chaffin, the 30 truck, is currently running second. How about the 38 truck of Brandon Witt running third? What a great run he's having. He made the switch from Ford to Toyota this year. What a terrific, this is by far his best ever truck series race so far. We saw him down at Daytona just lose his truck, get sideways. That's inexperience. He didn't really know what it was going to be like to go into a corner underneath another truck. He got sideways, spun out, and crashed his truck. He said, well, I just didn't know what that would be like. I, I learned something right there. And how much has he learned? He's shot up to the third spot in this race. Mike Skinner looks as though he's all right, but this is why he's unstrapping his belts. Check it out. He's right, right on the front. bottom. You saw the sparks right there, right on the bottom of the racetrack. He definitely had a tire go down. As you mentioned, it looked like the right front tire as you see the side-by-side -side battle for the lead as they come off turn number four. But I think Mike knew he had some sort of a problem because they were three wide coming off to this very lap, and he'd already backed up to about four or five truck lengths behind that side-by-side that -side battle for the lead. Now, an amazing shot that we just saw there was as they went by start-finish line, it looked as though the 30 was leading that as the caution flag was in the, in the uh, flagman's hand. Let's go down and check out these pit stops. Wendy? Chad Chaffin will be one of the first trucks to come on pit road. His team will do four tires, but no adjustments on Chad Chaffin's truck. He said it feels awesome. Brandon Witt is also in for four tires and fuel, but the truck is great. Don't touch it. He says no adjustments on Brandon Witt's truck. A great run for him, Ray. Well, Wendy, for Todd Bodine, they're going to try to tighten him up just a little bit. Down one pound of air pressure on the right rear. There'll be four tires and gas. You see all kinds of different uniforms on the crew members here as it's a hodgepodge crew putting it together. Everything pretty good so far. A little bit of a hang up on the left rear. These guys working on it. The two truck gets down and away. Todd Bodine's going to lose a few spots on pit road. And he, the left front tire did not. The left front tire was not hooked on there. And Jack Sprague ran into the back of the 66. Now Todd is going to try to back up and get back into his pit stall here while they'll get another tire and try to get it on. But they did not have the lug nuts tight on the left front. Wow, what a huge mistake. He had just raced his way to the front. Todd Bodine just takes the lead as the caution comes out, and these problems take place for Todd. They fit, um, Rick, you said at the start-finish line he was not ahead of the 30 truck, but obviously at the point when the caution flew, there was a timing line. He was ahead of him. The 30 just drove around him. That put him in the lead, but now he's going to restart about 20th. And remember, not necessarily when the flag waves, it's where, it's where they were when the light comes on, which is key from the control tower. The guy on the front was waving. Did you see him feel? He's like, ho, 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 wait, I got something going on up here. But and the Jackman, the Jackman was not aware of the fact that the left front tire changer had no lug nuts on the tire. And, and it's the Jackman's responsibility. He has to make sure that both guys are done when he drops that jack, because that's Todd's cue to go. Todd Bodine's made it back out onto the track, but not before losing a lot of track position. We'll be back with more from the Night Motor Speedway. Welcome back to the World Financial Group 200 on Speed Channel. Live from Atlanta Motor Speedway, the fastest track for the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. And one of the drivers out of the race that was leading earlier is Mike Skinner. And he's standing by with Ray Dunlap. Well, Rick, he's not out, but they do have a good bit of damage to this Toyota Tundra. Mike, did it give you any indication that there was a problem? 
No, uh, after looking at the tire, we, put, we must have ran over something. Um, tire's not wore out. It just, uh, just blew out. Uh, I really hate it. Our truck was obviously very awesome, and we had slowed down, and, uh, you know, I, I expected a caution to come out. It didn't, so I said, well, I'll just slow down, and when those guys, they were coming pretty hard, I said, I'll just let them go here. We got a real good truck. We're not going to mess with them right now, and uh, we're going to come in here and look at these tires. You know, we need to get them off and look at we was going to pit in the next couple laps and didn't get an opportunity to, but I hate it. The Toyota Tundra was awfully strong. The motor's awfully good in it. Okay, good luck getting back out there. They are working on the damage. I believe he will be able to return here shortly, but with a very damaged truck. You know, Rick, something we've seen is in qualifying, everybody gets afraid of the Toyotas. They qualify all of them right up toward the front. But then once the race starts going, we've seen them have success, and they're great racing trucks, obviously. But the other guys also get in the middle of the mix and make their, make their presence known as well. So right now we have a Dodge leading, a Ford in second, a Chevrolet in third, and a Toyota in fourth. My point is, it don't matter what you drive in the Craftsman Truck Series, you can get her to the front. Parity. The officials do a great job, Wayne Ott, the director of this series, uh, helping make sure that it is a level playing field. Jimmy Spencer out in front on lap 45. What a great pit stop by Buddy Barnes and his guys to get Jimmy Spencer out front. You know, and as a competitor, that's what you want. You want parity. NASCAR can tweak the rules to keep all the trucks the same. And as a race car driver, that's what you want. You want to know that your truck isn't any better than the other guy's truck because of what you're driving. It's better because of your ability. And remember the rule changes we talked about at the open of the show from Daytona. That was purely for safety issues. That had no competitive advantage to any one of the manufacturers just to try to keep these trucks on the ground if they get sideways. Man, I love watching these trucks run in Atlanta. You just look at all those trucks piled on one on top, on top of one another, going in different angles in the corners, running different lines. Michael, one thing we need to mention, that as Mike Skinner was hitting the wall, Bobby Hamilton was making a pit stop. So he is now being shown one lap down. As good as his truck, there's Bobby right there in the Bailey Cigarettes Dodge. As good as he was, he made a pit stop and is now a lap down. Wendy, what's going on with Bobby Hamilton? Bobby Hamilton had a right rear flat tire on lap 36, so they came in, and when he was in is when the caution came out, they changed right side tires only. So he went back out and then came back in on lap 41 and changed the left side tires and also made an adjustment at that time with air pressure and tightened up his truck as well. Well, he just became the free pass guy, Phil. He, he's the first truck a lap down. We saw this at California. No need to panic if you're Bobby Hamilton. He, he got a lap down, made it up, and ran second in California. Now, Michael, you're a guy who is a rim rider. You like to ride around the high side of the tracks a lot of times, but you talked about how scary this track is because you're going 190 miles an hour, and he passes just it almost looks carelessly on the outside. But, you know, in Bull Durham, when, you're, when they're playing baseball, they say hit them where they ain't. And in racing, if you got a truck that'll go where they ain't, you're gonna make up some ground. He just drove down to the corner. Deborah Renshaw, his teammate, is the free pass truck. He didn't want to follow her up in the corner. He had to go around her so that if the caution flew that moment, he would get his lap back. Drove around the top and marched on away from her. And unfortunately, not all of the racetracks on the Craftsman Truck Series circuit are like this. We can run from the very bottom to the very top of the racetrack. But this is, for a number of years, has been such a raceable racetrack that that's why everyone loves racing here. Now watch this corner, Phil. Here's your leader. He dives to the white line. The dude in second says, OK, fine, I'll go around the middle. They come off the end of the turn, they're still the same. That's what you like as a race car driver. You want to be able to have options. You know, we go to Bristol, Tennessee. Everybody bangs and beats for the bottom of the racetrack. That's not racing. That's not fun racing for the drivers because you know you've got to get to the bottom. Here, some guys in your way on the bottom, you just go to the top. Your top four separated by under one second. David Starr, seven tenths of a second behind our leader, Jimmy Spencer, when they went across the start finish line. And now a race for the lead on the outside. Chad Chaffin trying to take away the top spot from Jimmy Spencer. Great side-by-side -side battle. As you mentioned, Chad just drove to the top of the racetrack. Jimmy was on the bottom. Chad drove to the top. He's bringing Rick Crawford with him. And I think he'll make that pass stick. Look at him right around the top. Look at the left front of that truck field. That thing is buried to the racetrack. That is engineering. Racing these days, these racing vehicles have become engineered to the nth degree. They go down to the corner. They get the left front of the corner down. Spencer's fading. If they get the left front of that truck down, it just helps it turn in the corner. Chad Chaffin out in front. Wendy, how's he doing? 
Chad Chaffin knows how good his truck is. He was upset he didn't get to lead a lap before that caution. He came over the radio and said, I need those five points, boys. So he was hungry to get out in the lead once the green flag dropped. He is awfully confident tonight on the radio. He said, I know we have a winning truck. But this is something he has an experience, Phil. For the folks at home, he, has, he is catching all the air right on the front of that truck right now. Now, it may be just fine leading the race. It might not mess it up, but he's got Rick Crawford right behind him. He's got all the air pushing down on the front of his truck. It could get loose right now. We heard so many of the drivers complain about being loose in that first run before that yellow flag for Mike Skinner's blown tire in contact with the wall. So I'm sure all these crew chiefs tighten these trucks up to try to make them drive better, but did they go enough? We're on top of Terry Cook's truck looking ahead to Todd Bodine. Ray, what's happening? Well, just wanted to add to what Phil was talking about, Rick. Uh, for uh, Rick Crawford, they went up two pounds of air pressure on both right side tires. A number of guys doing air pressure adjustments just on right side. A couple of them did track bar adjustments. That way they can uh, try to get these things tightened up a little bit because everybody's still saying they're not quite tight enough yet. So still a little bit of a loose condition out there, even though we're just barely into this run. Guys, remember, this is only the second time we've been in Atlanta Motor Speedway, and last year's race was during the day, so really no one had, an, had a notebook on what happens to this track at night. And, Phil, look at this. That's third through about ninth or tenth. See that pack of trucks right there? That's third place. There's tenth or fifteenth behind them, and that's what a pit stop will do to you. Some of the guys help their trucks. It just brings the, the field tighter and tighter together. You see Shane Mill here. He's fighting to try to get back in the race. He's three laps down, but he's got a fast truck. He's so far behind by the virtue of the fact that he's three laps behind. He can't really even think about a free pass right now. He needs to get up there and try to pass the leader to be eligible for, for a restart. We saw him come in the pits there because of a flat tire. Well, then he sped leaving pit road. He had to come back in the pits. And then he sped coming in the pits. He actually got two penalties on from his initial pit stop, that's what finds him three laps down right now. But he looks like he's fairly serious about getting one up back right here. He drove around the third place truck. There's the battle for third, from third, fifth, seventh, ninth, twelfth. That's what a pit stop will do. They ran 30 or 40 laps. They were able to come to pit road, adjust on their trucks, and it just draws the field tighter and tighter together. That's what will happen as we go through the whole night tonight. Another caution, some other people will improve their trucks. That'll make them get into the battle as well. So Shane Meal trying to reel in the top two trucks. The one out in front is the 30 of Chad Chaffin. Two wins for Chad Chaffin in his career. He enjoys being a part of the stars of the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. Enjoys being under the lights. Chad Chaffin out in front in Atlanta Motor Speedway. Coverage of the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series Atlanta 200 on Speed Channel is brought to you by new high endurance oils from Mobile, official lubricants of NASCAR. By Chevy, the new Chevrolet, an American revolution. And by Domino's Pizza. Get the door, it's Domino, the official pizza of NASCAR. Oh, yeah. The 555 race day special. Five. While we were away, Rick Crawford reclaimed the top spot from Chad Chapman. Let's take a look. Rick had been dogging Chad Chaffin. There you see him on the bottom of the racetrack. Chad running that high line again. Rick gets a good bite off turn two. He's going to pull up beside him and then beat him down into turn number three. We've seen a lot of passes made around the top tonight, Phil. You know, guys will go in and go around the top of someone. Now we see a guy going around the bottom of someone. Here comes the six of Hornaday right around Jimmy Spencer on the bottom again, making his way to the front. Great run for Hornaday. Hornaday was fifth when we went away to commercial. He ended up passing David Starr for the fourth position. Now passes Jimmy Spencer for third. And the black truck on the inside of Jimmy Spencer, Johnny Benson, he too has been knifing his way through this field. He has a very fast truck right now, races up to the fourth position. You also see David Rudiman. He's behind David Starr. He's in the fifth truck back, the blue truck there. Bobby Kennedy and that team not only not only Rudiman's truck, whoa, Dennis gets a little bit hot, but also the orange truck you see there behind the guy that almost hit the wall, that's Robert Huffman. Both of those Darrell Walter Motorsports trucks made great pit stops, got into the top 10, and they've been very solid since the restart. There's another teammate duo going forward right now, and that's the 46 and 47 of Dennis Setzer and the 47 of 
Bobby Labonte. Yeah, Bobby going around the outside. Dennis Setsa did make contact with the outside wall while we were watching. There's a good shot of Bobby right there. Bobby loves running these trucks. He said he would run these trucks every time he had a chance. He just absolutely has a ball. For the second time in the last three or four laps, Phil, Shane Mill is back on pit road. Something's going wrong with that truck. They've uh, lost three laps. Now they've lost two more and back on pit road again. It's pretty much going to end a end his day at least for being in contention to win here we changed tires a couple laps ago when he made an unscheduled pit stop he's back in now they're putting right side tires on it again he's going to run out of tires pretty soon <laughs> he must be about out and look here here comes chad chapman closing back in on rick crawford like i said earlier phil you get the lead you feel like superman you're following the guy you pass him you get the lead and you say all right we'll leave here from now for now but then all that air gets on the front of your truck it makes it loose and you have to back up and we've seen the 30 of Chad Chapman running a little bit higher line. Do you think he picked that up from his team owner a year ago? Well, you just go where your truck wants to go. People at this, watch out, watch. Setzer just gets in the line. Had a little bit of help there from Huffman or no? I didn't, it didn't look like they made any contact. Might be a little air induced, a little swip, swag on their uh, look at the that Dennis did. Is that what you call it? Bobby Labonte on the outside. Is that Phil Vassar on that truck? It is Phil Vassar on Bobby Labonte's truck. Did you hear him sing that national anthem? That was an incredible job. Ray, what's going on in Bobby Labonte's pit? You know, Phil, what I can't believe down here, what I'm hearing on the radio, especially from the 47, most of these guys made track bar adjustments. They went down on the track bar to try to tighten these trucks up. But guess what? They're even looser now than they were before. I've heard that from Bobby Labonte. I also heard it from Dennis Setzer. I heard it down here on the other end from a couple of trucks, from Jimmy Spencer. Spencer is way too loose. So these guys made adjustments to their trucks, and believe it or not, they got worse. Wendy? Same report from Chad Chaffin. After those adjustments, he is still loose. And who's getting even more loose is David Rudiman. They made a ton of adjustments on that truck to tighten him up, and he said the same report. It seems even worse than it was on that first run. There's Rudiman. He goes underneath the lap truck of Ken Weaver. Here's Tabo Dine. He gets sideways a little bit off the corner, and here comes Tracy Hines looking under him. This is a battle for the 13th position. Now, remember earlier, Tabo Dine had problems in the pits. His left front wheel came off as he was trying to get out of the, his pit stall, and now he's raced his way up to 16 or 12. But now he's getting passed by Tracy Hines. Maybe that thing's going loose. Bill, I drove these trucks last year at Charlotte. Was fortunate enough to lead the most laps during the course of the race. Thought I had a shot to win it. The thing that impressed me the most about them is when they would get loose, which my truck stayed loose pretty much that whole night. But they'll get sideways, and because of the big side they have on them, you don't necessarily spin out. I mean, it's not a comfortable feeling, well, but you can deal with it when it's loose here in these trucks. And I think that's what a lot of guys are doing right now, just dealing with ill-handling racing trucks. Problem, Bobby Labonte across the infield sideways. And that's not dealing with it in a, in a good manner. In a positive manner at all. Unbelievable how he saves that as he comes onto pit road. The caution has come out, and Bobby Labonte will make his way back out onto the track. Bobby will stay on the lead lap. Bobby Hamilton will get the free pass. And so Bobby Hamilton makes it back onto the lead lap as Rick Crawford continues to lead in Atlanta. this time trying to continue to tighten him up but he got off pit road way ahead of everybody good pit stop for the 14 guys well it's something about running up front and your pit crew gets pumped up your drivers pumped up your crew chiefs pumped up as you see Bobby Labonte right there he's the reason we had this caution pack let's see if we can see what happened to Bobby it's gonna happen coming off turn number four He's running on the high side of the track, and the thing looks like it just gets away from him, Phil. And how fortunate is he to slide through the grass at 175 mile an hour and not have any damage? And you don't have that much room on the back stretch. So if, he's, if he does that coming off turn two, more than likely he's going to make some pretty hard contact with the inside wall. And that grass isn't going to blow his tires out. So he can just mosey on his way, get back to pit road, put some more tires on it, and get back in the race. 
And I would have to say that's a successful test of the skirts for the trucks. He did not get upside down, sliding in a similar fashion that uh, Rick Crawford did in Daytona. Ten grown men wearing skirts. How cool is that on a Friday night? Sideways through the grass, Bobby Labonte brings out our second caution flag in Atlanta. Green flag flies as the leader, Rick Crawford, makes his way through turn number two and down the backstretch. They shuffle off into turn one. You can see the lap trucks down on the inside. Shane Mill there has wound up six laps down, six laps down because of his pit road problems. Ron Hornaday has driven to second his Chevrolet. Good pit stop by Wally Rogers and his good wrench bunch to get Ron Hornaday out in the second position. Good stop by Rick Crawford's crew as well. Kevin Cowboy Starlin coming over to that team this year, and it's showing his influence on this team. How fun is that? Cowboy had a lot of success with Carl, and then he he, he shows that, that he had some responsibility in that. He knew what he was doing when he tuned that truck up. You can't go as fast as Carl was going last year without having a guy turning the wrenches that knows what he's doing. You get another guy behind the wheel, pretty much on the opposite end of the spectrum. Rick's been around a long time, and uh, Cowboy's able to relate to him just as well as he did Carl. Talked to Cowboy just before the race after qualifying, and Cowboy said he feels almost more comfortable with Rick because he's almost the same type of person that Cowboy is. They're very similar in their racing backgrounds. I, I wish my name was Cowboy. I, I think that's cool when you get a name. Well, I think I saw something about you and Poker, and you tried to look a little bit like I, a Cowboy. I told you I wanted to be a Cowboy, right? I want to be a Cowboy. Hey guys, uh, Cowboy said, guess what, Rick? We got another set of tires here and we are definitely going to use them. So plan on giving me very good feedback of what kind of an adjustment we need here on our last pit stop. We're gonna use those tires and believe it or not, nobody down here can go on fuel so they know there's gonna be one more pit stop in this race. Now, interesting thing that happened right there, Phil. You saw Shane Mill sideways in the center of the corner and he makes the pass. <laughs> That's what I mean about you can drive these trucks a little loose. I didn't know you could pass for the pass the leader sideways but Shane just proved you could you know a lot of the cup cars whether it's a Nextel cup car or a bush car when the cars get a little bit yawed which means they start turning they lose downforce but these trucks as you mentioned these sides are so big in these trucks when they get in yaw or turn a little bit they gain downforce that's why you can get these things sideways and not lose control of them like a lot of the cars do and Shane's just in the mode of right, right now showing everybody how fast his truck is. You know, we're six or seven laps down, but we're going to show you that we got a truck that could have won this race tonight. He's got DI power under the hood. I know how good that feels, and it also is handling very well, obviously. Just in front of Jimmy Spencer for now is David Starr in that Spears Manufacturing number 75 Chevrolet. That had a, he had a great run in California before having an accident. He looked as though he was boys ready for another victory such a good truck really felt like Dave McCarty said we really felt like we had that one in the bag but hey those things happen he got on the inside of another tr truck lost the air off the spoiler lost control got into the outside wall clipped a couple trucks and unfortunately ended his day but looks like they have a great run going here there's another guy that yeah. you always expect to see at the front of the field huh Rick Johnny Benson out in front or out in front of quite a few trucks but currently being shown in the fifth position his consistency has been able to put him back up into the top of the points chase. Uh, he is running very well so far, and he ran very well in every race he ran last year. I think if you look at the top ten in points, look at there, Chad Chapman, a power move around the outside of Johnny. He just got that thing right on the right, right rear quarter of Johnny's. That makes the black truck of Johnny Benson extremely loose when Chad put his, put his left front right on him like that, just went right around him. You know, Chad was teammates last year to Bobby Hamilton. He saw Bobby Hamilton win this race by primarily running the top of the racetrack. Chad's been doing that this entire race. We saw him lead a lot of this race, and he's making his way back towards the front. He's now currently back in the top five. Wendy made the comment. She listens to the radios, and Chad Chaffin thought that he had a truck that could win this race. Another, if you're a Bobby Labonte fan, Bobby started uh, decent, spun through the grass a minute ago, went to the back, He's driven back up to the top 10, so don't count him out quite yet. If there's anybody that knows how to get around Atlanta, it's Bobby Labonte. Rudiman to the bottom, he's got a yeah. problem. Problem for David Rudiman, the NTN bearing Toyota. Bobby Labonte has six Nextel Cup wins here at this racetrack. Ray? 
Hey guys, Rick Crawford definitely wants to win this race tonight. He's got a very special reason. Why? Because his first ever car owner, Gary Gaines from Pensacola, Florida, passed away this week. He said he was one of the greatest guys ever that he knew, and he said he really did a lot to help him get his career started. So he said he knows that tonight there's extra special effort for Gary Gaines. Now for the six truck, Ron Hornaday is a little bit tight in the center of two right now. He said it's rolling over on the right rear. So he wants to make an adjustment with his crew chief, Wally Rogers. How about the 75, Wendy? David Starr has been loose all night. Even after two rounds of pit stops, he's still a little loose. He's complaining that it's been real skatey all night long, right? A brand new truck tonight for Jimmy Spencer. It is chassis number 40, the latest one to roll off the jig over at Ultra Motorsports. Jimmy Spencer has been very, very happy with this truck. It was loose at the beginning, but they did some adjustments, went down on the track bar, and Spencer says the thing is just right for him now. How about the 30, Wendy? I keep hearing drivers complaining about vibration. The tires keep rumbling on these drivers. But he came in on lap 71, took four tires and fuel, made an air pressure adjustment, and that was it. He also, 23 of Johnny Benson, he came in four tires and fuel. He was complaining that he couldn't pass anyone. You saw when Chad Chapman made that move on Johnny Benson, he was complaining his truck was not able to pass anyone, Ray. Wendy, Ted Musgrave has three victories on mile and a half racetracks. I think he may be one of the guys to get in this fight before it's over. They've made adjustments on his truck as he continues to move forward through the field. The number one truck started all the way back in 21st tonight, and now he has moved up to seven. How about Todd Bodine and that number 66 truck? We saw that bad pit stop they had where the left front tire was not on, but Bodine has driven his way through the field. I'll tell you what, I think Todd might get the award tonight for passing the most trucks. Now for the next guy in line is the 47 of Bobby Labonte. He was pretty funny when he was spinning down through the grass, guys. What he said was, hey crew, I'll be over there in just a second. I'm taking a shortcut as he spun through the grass. Now for the 46, Dennis Setzer, they have not made a lot of progress on that truck for him tonight. Setzer has been talking about being loose all evening long. He's driving chassis number 31. It's been 20 races since Dennis Setzer went to Victory Lane at Texas. Last year, he won two races on mile and a half tracks. After we've completed 89 of 130, we've had seven different leaders in this race. World Financial Group 200, we return. Coverage of the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series Atlanta 200 on Speed Channel is brought to you by Dodge. You can take life as it comes, or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge by Aqua Velva. Aqua Velva keeps your face toned and fit. There's something about an Aqua Velva man. And by Advance Auto Parts. For the best parts, people, and price, we're ready in advance. Anybody ever tell you you kind of look like an Aqua Velva man? No, thank you for bringing that up, though, Michael. Rick Crawford still out in front of the pack. One of seven drivers that have been out in front. Rick Crawford, the pole sitter, he's racing for $6,000 for his team if he can win this one. The American Le Mans Series returns to Speed Channel tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. Eastern live to kick off their season with the 12 hours of Sebring. ALNS races feature four classes of race cars competing for class wins and the overall win. 12 hours of Sebring tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. live on Speed Channel. Rick Crawford has led 41 laps tonight. He sat on the pole. Michael, just so I can justify, the $6,000 I talked about is the win from the pole award that he may be able to win. Oh, he's going to win more than that. Was he's the good. only one that won that award last year. Rick Crawford could win it for his team this year. He will win more than $6,000. You look at this battle for second. We've got great battles going on all over the track. Ron Hornaday now in second, but he's trying to hold off a hard-charging Chad Chaffin. Now, I know we deliver this race with with a lot of beautiful shots, action-packed shots on TV. But man, if you're at the track, there's, we can't capture the whole track. There's battles everywhere, Phil. These trucks are getting it done here. The racing in the Craftsman Truck Series is so good week in, week out, of all different types of racetracks. We've got great side-by-sides. It's commonplace to have side-by-side -side racing here in the Truck Series. I'm getting dizzy trying to watch the, the, the monitors, which you're seeing at home, and all the crazy action that's going on on the track. On board with Terry Cook, 
Power Stroke Diesel by International. I'm also getting dizzy watching Shane Mill come to pit road. He's on there again. He's having all kinds of problems tonight. Very fast truck, but problems with the 15. And so he spent most of his night down pit road. Uh, we saw Tracy Hines go to the back at the start of this race, but yet he's still battling in the top 15. I don't know where Richie Waters is coming up with all those tires. These most of these trucks only had four sets of tires to start this race for good sets of tires and we've seen Shane change tires five times. They've got to be recycling these tires and putting the tires back on that they took off earlier. Look how high that truck ran right there off turn four. Two. Chad Chaffin did get in front of the six of Ron Hornaday. Ricky Craven running on the inside. Hey, Rick, he's, had a, Cook. he's had a pretty good start to his Craftsman Truck Series career here. He's got two top five finishes in the two races we've had so far at Daytona and California. Ricky Craven, a seasoned veteran. Not quite as good tonight so far, but Phil, there's still another pit stop that has to happen. And if a caution flies, I'm telling you, the top 15 speeds are so close to one another, just the right adjustment could put one of these guys running 10th or 12th right into contention for the win. But right now we're inside 30 laps to go. So if the caution come, if the caution doesn't come out, we're going to see some green flag pit stops, and that's when these guys on pit road really have to earn their money. Now when strategy comes into play here, will we see a two-tire pit stop? Can you do that? Not this now. In this race? Not now. They've been green too long, Rick. They've used their tires up. Oh, we got to spin Kelly Sutton around the bottom of the racetrack. She's going to get away without hitting anything. Sir, sure enough, she stays away that, from the wall. That 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 not what Kelly needed, obviously, but that's what this race needed. We're going to see some crazy stuff happen here. Guys that can get a little bit better pit stop, an adjustment that is better than the guy ahead of you, and uh, no telling who's going to win this yeah, race. I hit the um, inside wall. She, she did? Heard, heard Kelly Sutton say she hit the inside wall. It didn't look like it. She's got a bunch of flat tires right now, but she may have made, a, made slight contact with the wall, but not too much damage to the Copax and Chevrolet. Now, this shifts a lot of the outcome of this race onto the pit, onto the crew, as they are going to get ready for their final pit stop. Phil, whoa, the 14 just sucked her air right off of her. Just drove around the outside, just pulled the back end of her truck around. There's probably where she made a little contact with the inside wall, as we heard her say. But what close call for Rick Crawford. That's how, that's how aerodynamically sensitive these, these vehicles are. He just was driving around her. She was doing it great job just bumped into the wall she was doing a great job staying down like she should and all of a sudden she's looking in the infield and rick never touched her he just drove around her in the air off of rick crawford's truck pulled the back end of her truck around rick crawford last time in they had a great pit stop brought him back out in front of the field and so now he's going to hope that he gets the same quality of pit stop and enable him to be back out in front as the entire field will follow the four down pit road. Wendy? Chad Chapman makes his way down pit road. He's been excited about his truck all night long. You can hear the confidence in his voice as the crew goes to work on the right-hand side. The tire changer has actually been replaced on the front side. Front tire changer has been replaced on this pit stop because they were lo losing so many spots on pit road the first two stops. Ray? Wendy, for Ron Hornaday on the bottom of your screen, they're going to go down around on the track bar, trying to tighten him up just a little bit. For Rick Crawford, they had a great stop last time. Bobby Clark changes the front. It's Tim Sanders on the rear. Gene Gator Norris at Morris is the jackman, and Dave McClure gas. They've got plenty of gas in it. They pulled one tear off for Crawford, and he is going to be the first guy off pit road once again. David Starr will advance a position and go past Hornaday. Great race off pit road. Rick Crawford winning that battle. And so the Circle Bar team celebrating that they are holding on to the top spot at the Atlanta 200. We'll be back with more on Speed. Welcome back to Atlanta Motor Speedway. We take a look at our Toyota Spotlight. How the Toyota is running currently. Todd Bodine and Johnny Benson. Fourth and sixth, but that is going to change. Unfortunately, we're being told that the 66 of Todd Bodine, the 23 of Johnny Benson, and the two, the Dodge of Jimmy Spencer, were all fast, leaving pit road too fast, and will be penalized and be at the back of this pack when they line up for the restart. Now, pit road speed is electronically cal uh, taken, calibrated. No, not calibrated. Time. 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 I tried to use a bigger word than I should have. <laughs> but my point is, um, 
So they definitely were guilty. And race car drivers forever said, they called me speeding, but I wasn't speeding. I promise you, they were speeding. So those guys are going to go to the back. So as they will have to make their way to the back, we will take a short break and be back with more from Atlanta. Rick Crawford leading the field back to the start finish line. Randy Kaiser takes the pace truck down pit road. David Rudiman, lap truck on the inside of Rick Crawford. We get back to racing. Rudiman is currently in a position to get his lap back, but he needs a caution in the next 20 laps. Bill he won't ever get to have that opportunity because uh, he needs a caution in the next 10 laps because it, there is no free pass in the last 10 laps. And this race is 130 laps. We've got 20 laps to go as David Starr looks to the inside. Race for the lead. Three wide. Three wide going into turn three. Ron Hornady on the inside is going to take the top spot away from the 75 of David Starr. And look at the sparks flying from Hornady's number six Chevrolet. I think that's that's a product of low air pressure. These guys will let a little air out of these tires knowing they have 20 laps to run. And that's probably that should get better as uh, as they put more laps on these tires. As Ron Hornaday went across the start finish line, he's the only driver to lead all three races this season. Rick Crawford is dropping like a stone. He's almost back in the, almost out of the top 10 right now. And the opposite end of that spectrum, Bobby Hamilton charged around the outside of four or five trucks into the top five as they race off turn four. And after two races this year, that's no surprise to me to see Bobby Hamilton going towards the front towards the end of this race. Remember folks, John, or Bobby Hamilton started 36th in this race, has raced now up into the top four. We saw his truck make a great start early in the race and then fade, Phil. 20 laps might just be in his window to where he can make some noise before this thing's over. And you know, he had a flat tire, so maybe he had a slow leak and that's why he faded once he got up to about 10th or 11th position. Right now, he looks to be pretty good. These cats are all over one another, all over this racetrack. You can see a caution right now. People are racing really hard back through the field. Chad Chaffin just behind Bobby Hamilton. Again, Chad Chaffin drove for Bobby Hamilton last year. Now he's going to follow him around the track. Crawford's drop back, as Phil, you mentioned. He's how do behind you? Terry Cook in that Power Stroke Diesel by International. How, how do you figure that? You would think Rick Crawford, he was so good on that last restart led so much of this race and the, when the green flag came out they passed him on both sides and he's currently being shown back out of the top 10. He had a good corner there. He's dri driven up on the inside of Bill Lester. Had a good corner there. Maybe he can get that thing rolling here before the end of the race. Starr was looking on the inside of Hornaday as they shot down into turn one. Ron held him off. Three Chevys pacing this field late in the going. As you mentioned, everyone talks about the Toyotas, how strong the Toyotas are, how much horsepower they have. And here we are, less than 20 laps to go. We've got three Chevrolets running one, two, three. But man, there's a fast Toyota in fifth. That truck of Chad Chapman has been impressive all night long. He's peeking on the outside. Can you get on the outside of Bobby Hamilton? I don't think there's room. Wendy? The worst part about Chad Chapman's night is his stops on pit road. He has had trouble every stop on pit road and has lost as much as 10 positions on pit road. They actually pulled the front tire changer off that after the second stop and put a new tire changer in its place for the third stop, but he still lost spots. Fell back to eighth after that pit stop. Chad Chapman is hungry for a win and keeps making his way to the front every stop. Did I tell you that the adjustments would bring the front of this field together? What do we have here? Eight, seven, eight trucks. Bobby Hamilton around the top side of the field. Drives by the third place truck of Dennis Setcher. Drive by the se second place truck of David Starr. And now going after Ron Hornaday. Wow. Two wow. veterans, two champions of this series. Bobby Hamilton, Ron Hornaday. Hornaday out in front. Bobby Hamilton tries to take away the top spot. As they come by the start finish line, Bobby Hamilton becomes the ninth different leader of this race. But it isn't over yet, Rick. On the inside, Hornaday dives down in the corner. I think right here, Bobby Hamilton has a preferred line, and he should be able to race ahead of Hornaday on the back stretch. Saw David Starr get very, very loose that lap and allowed Bobby Labonte to get up on his outside to take over the fourth position. But Hornaday won't give up. He's back to the inside and back beside Bobby Hamilton. We saw this last year. We saw Mike Skinner and Bobby Hamilton race side by side right to the start finish line. Mike Skinner ended up spinning out off of turn number four, trying to beat Bobby Hamilton. Bobby Hamilton, Dennis Setzer, one and two, Ron Hornaday third, and veteran Bobby Labonte in fourth. So a great race. 
building up as we're getting close to 10 laps to go in this race. I feel like Dick Vitale. I mean, I, I can't keep from screaming. Every time I try, try to say something, it comes out in this crazy Ted, voice. Ted Musgrave's coming into this battle. He takes over the sixth position. What about Setzer? He uh, uh, practically hadn't heard of him all night long. Here he is trying to get around Bobby Hamilton as they go into turn one. Looks to the inside, side by side battle for the lead. Four trucks side by side for the for the lead of this race. Ray. Michael, Bobby Labonte has 21 career victories in Nextel Cup racing. Guess what? Six of them have happened right here at the Atlanta Motor Speedway. Bobby Labonte told me before the race, he said, I like the impound deal with these trucks. He said, this is working out pretty good because we feel like we got ours as good as it can be for race trim. He said, I wasn't too worried about qualifying, but it's good in the race. We'll see if Bobby Labonte is able to get up there and try to compete for this win. What a corner Ron Hornaday had. He drove by Bobby Labonte, drove up beside Dennis Sitzer, wasn't quite able to make the pass, but he had a terrific corner the last time through turns three and four. Let's see if he can do it again. What about this cat looking down on the inside? This is Ted Musgrave. He's saying, boys, I'm coming calling. I'm going to be there before it's over. Five veterans, one through five right now, Bobby Hamilton. And now on the inside, it's Dennis Setzer. They're side by side as they go through the corner. On the inside, it's Ron Hornaday. On the outside is Bobby Labonte. You've got the most famous names in NASCAR battling side by side, and they're three wide going down the back stretch. And look at Bobby Labonte trying to find a place to tuck in there. Hornaday hard into turn three, grabs the lead. Look at Musgrave on the bottom of the racetrack. He may make it three wide side by side right now with Dennis Setzer for the third position. Ron Hornaday in front of the field now as Bobby Hamilton gives chase. He'd love to be a repeat winner at this race. Bobby Hamilton isn't done yet. He drives around the outside. Hornaday gets a little bit loose. Oh, wow, what a great race in the late going here in Atlanta. They come up on the slower lap traffic. Ron Hornaday has to check up Bobby Labonte back, or Bobby Labonte trying to get by him now on the outside. Bobby Hamilton out in front again. Guys, Bobby Labonte cannot get in the corner. We watch from his onboard. He backs off way early. It always allows somebody to drive up beside him entering the corner. His truck must be a little bit loose entering the corner. There's six, seven, eight, nine, ten trucks within striking distance. And you know what's liable to happen to Phil? As we win the laps away, there's seven to go. People are trying to get a move done. When there's two or three to go, they might decide it's time to lean on one another. And if I'm running eighth or tenth, I might can shoot through the middle all of them win the race. They're being nice right now, but when it comes, when push comes to shove, as you mentioned, a couple laps to go, we may see some fireworks. Well, the sparks continue to fly from underneath the number six of Ron Hornaday. He's back out in front. They switch leads every lap right now. Here comes Bobby Hamilton. He's going to just swing around the outside of Hornaday like he did the last lap. Hornaday's got a better line off turn two. Can he hold Bobby Hamilton off? You got a lap truck up on the outside. Ken Weaver is in Bobby Hamilton's way. He has to pull down behind Ron Hornaday to get around the lap truck. Wow, good turn for Hornaday. Look how deep he was able to get in the corner, Phil. Throws away from him a little bit there. If he could just get a bit of a break away from him, maybe he can drive off. Right now, they're drafting huge on Hornaday. Five laps to go, Ray. Hey, guys, Setzer, Musgrave, and Hamilton all have three victories on mile-and-a-half tracks, but none for Hornaday. I asked him before the race, how come you've never won on a mile-and-a-half? He said, Ray, I never raced on very many mile-and-a-halves when I was truck racing. He said, but tonight we're going to get her done. And he has gotten away from Hamilton now. Looks like Hornaday is going for it. Wow, that's a big deal. It's a big deal to break that much room away from him, Phil. He's not, he's not vulnerable to them, the guys behind him making him loose in the turns. He's able to get him a bit of a gap there. A year ago, we saw the number six Goodrich Chevrolet running consistently up front. But Kevin Harvick, owner of this truck, decided, I need to make a change. I want to see this truck win. And so he took Matt Crafton out of the seat and put Ron Hornaday Jr. in the seat for this very fact right here. He wants that truck in victory lane. And Ron Hornaday has just three laps to go to get to victory lane. He's done such a terrific job. Wally Rogers, his entire pit crew, has had great pit stops. They've got him out towards the front, and Ron has driven the wheels off that truck. And what Ron's looking in the mirror right now and seeing is two guys behind him side by side. They were side by side as they went in the turn, and he continues to drive away, running some very fast laps right now, too, Phil. It almost looked like when Bobby Hamilton had to duck around that lap truck that was on the outside, that it kind of 
broke his rhythm a little bit. Now he, he hasn't been able to stay with Ron Honerde like and they were racing side by side as we see a change for second position. Bobby Labonte taking away the second spot from Bobby Hamilton. It's Ron Hornaday out in front, two laps of racing to go. Bobby Labonte has seemed to be the fastest truck in that five or six truck battle here of the last couple of three laps. Now he's got some clean air. Can he drive up on the back of Ron Hornaday and get the win on the last lap? We've seen him get beat on the last lap here in Atlanta. We've seen him pass for a win here as well. He knows what he's doing. And they're side by side for third. Dennis Setzer on the inside. We're hearing caution flag. Rick oh, Crawford. Rick Crawford in the number 14. Sparks flying, and so the caution is going to fly, and it does fly prior to the white flag coming out. And so that means we will have a green, white, checkered finish. If I'm going to have a green, white, checker, and I know we're going to, a lot depends on the restart, I want Ron Hornaday in my truck. How about you, Michael? Oh, it's, oh, boy, bad news from Rick Crawford. You heard me said I've either dislocated or broken my shoulder. Oh, wow. Man. Hard hit for the number four. Crawford, and we hear he wants people says there as soon as possible. Says he's hurt. That's yeah. a terrible blow to that outside wall. Second year in a row, a hard, hard hit here for Rick Crawford. And so as the 14 truck waits for the safety crew to get to him, we will break away for just a moment and come back to a very exciting finish again in Atlanta. Coverage of the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series Atlanta 200 on Speed Channel is brought to you by Craftsman, celebrating 10 years tough of the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. By TGI Fridays, irresistible new sizzling platters. Everyone can use more Fridays. By Dodge, you can take life as it comes or you can grab life by the horn. Dodge. And by the new high endurance oils from Mobile, official lubricants of NASCAR. And while we were away, a great sight. Rick Crawford climbing out of his truck, and he had mentioned his shoulder possibly being dislocated or broke, but by the movement that we're seeing as he comes out of there, he actually threw it, looked like part of his uniform back into the truck, and so his arms look like they're working okay. Let's take a look at why this caution took place. It'll be an incredibly hard hit. Right middle of your screen, the right front tire goes down, makes extremely hard for the outside of arm. Michael, fortunately, we have softer walls here. I'd have hated to see that, that contact with a hard wall. I just I just want to hug whoever invented those things in NASCAR for putting them up these racetracks. It's just amazing the difference it makes when you run into the wall like that. I'm sure with the angle that Rick hit the wall, he thought something's got to be broken. That was huge, but the safer barriers cushioned it enough to where he was able to walk away from that from that truck and not be hurt. Out in front of this field, Ron Hornaday Jr. and currently standing by with his team owner is Ray Dunlap. Well, thank you, Rick. Tonight will be the 49th time we've gone green-white checkered in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. I stood here and watched you watch those last 15 laps, and I, I thought you were going to fall off the pit box. I need a barf bag about right now. Uh, I tell you what, Ron Hornaday Jr. is uh, really exciting to watch, and I thought we were out of it there. Fell back, but I should know better than to give up on these guys. Uh, these, this GM Goodrich Silverado has uh, been fun to watch, to say the least. I'm way more nervous than I would be if I was sitting in the seat. <laughs> I'll bet. Let's check in with Wendy. Crew Chief Danny Rollins of Bobby Hamilton. Another night to overcome a lot of misfortune. You were lapped down earlier. This gives you another chance with the green-white checkered. Yeah, I'm glad. Uh, you know, Bobby Bobby and these Bailey's guys right here, I mean, they've done an awesome job tonight. Uh, I just hope he can hold these guys off right here. I mean, I think he's stout enough to get to the front. You know what he's fixing to do, so as uh, long as they don't get up there and block him, I think we'll be okay. Folks, remember, Bobby Hamilton won this race last year after going a lap down with engine problems. He went a lap down tonight. He could do it again. Bobby Hamilton almost laying back as the green flag flies. Bobby spun the wheels there. As soon as he jumped in the throttle, he spun the wheels. That's going to allow Bobby Labonte to pull away by about eight or ten truck lengths. But he is right on the back of Hornaday. We could see a pass for the lead here at the end, just like we did a year ago. Look at the tremendous run. Bobby Labonte's getting off turn two, driving right up on the back, knee back deck lid of that truck. Drives Started. around the outside. Ron Hornaday on the inside. Bobby Labonte coming up behind him as they go across the start finish line. The white flag flies. One lap of racing to go. It's a tailgate. He stays up on the back tailgate. And they're racing to turn one that way. Bobby's staying on the outside. He knows Ron. Look at him. He's pulling up beside him, it looks like. Ron Hornaday on the inside as they go down the back stretch. Here comes Bobby Side. It's Bobby Labonte trying to get by Ron Hornaday as they go to three and four. Ron 
drives it down in the corner. As they work their way through three and four, they're side by side coming out of turn number four on the high side. Bobby Labonte, they hit again. It's Bobby Labonte and Ron Hornaday. Ron Hornaday goes across the start finish line just inches in front of Bobby Labonte. How could this race have been better than last year? And I think it was. <laughs> I can't believe it. I think we got it. I think we got it. Oh, we've got a crash on the first United, straightaway. Brother. I think you got it, Hornaday, by about six inches. He said six inches. Yeah, thanks for the pit stop. Our clock says eight one thousandths of a second. And he was sideways doing it. That truck was out of control and his foot was flat on the floorboard. Almost deja vu. Ray Dunlap. Crew Chief Wally Rogers has the great flame hat on. I think that was the deal, man. What a driver you had behind the wheel and what a great race truck. I got to tell you, I can't tell you how proud I am to have Ron Hornaday driving that GM Cooter and Chevy, man. Yeah. And these boys right here, they work their tails off every day. And we had some ups and downs all last year, and I kept telling everybody how good we are, and I'm, I just, I can't tell you how happy I am right now. This is just so awesome. I'd like to thank Kevin and Delana and Fred and everybody for giving us everything that we got because this man right here, he gives me everything I need to make this team run like they do. All right, you guys go to victory lane. Wally Rogers will be the winning crew chief tonight for Ron Hornaday. Guys, what an unbelievable finish to this race. Yes, that's exactly how you explain that. <laughs> Who could have, could we have sat here and said it'd be better than last year? There's no way. I, I, last year's race was one of the best finishes I've ever seen in any form of racing. Chevy congratulates Ron Hornaday and the winning Goodrent Chevrolet Silverado on today's big win. No truck has dominated the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series like the Chevy Silverado. Chevy, the winningest name in racing in American Revolution. And look at the burnout Ron Hornaday is showing to the crowd. 27 wins for Ron Hornaday. He continues to lead the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series with the most victories in this series. Wow. Take another look at this winning moment for Ron Hornaday. I thought Bobby Labonte had this thing. On the outside, he was in the preferred line. And watch this. Sideways as they come out of turn four, Ron Hornaday corrects it. And look at this. One foot possibly separating the number six and the 47 as they go across the start finish line. Eight one thousandths of a second. We'll be back with more on speed. Welcome back to Atlanta Motor Speedway, and we have just seen the closest margin of victory on a super speedway ever in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series and the third closest of all time for the Craftsman Truck Series. It's right there. They're going about 180 miles an hour and they're separated by a foot. Ron Hornaday celebrating his 27th victory in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series and he does it not only on the front stretch but also in victory lane. Ron Hornaday celebrating in victory burnout which you don't see every day and you can't keep him in the truck he is already out of the truck and standing by in victory lane well i'll tell you what right his wife lindy comes in and i i've seen a lot of things before but i've never seen a burnout in victory lane that was got to be one of the greatest races you've ever been a part of richard Childers horsepower i gotta thank them for one gm goodwrench everybody i mean awesome pit stop these guys right here they made the race i mean in there i was terrible they got me out got about seven or eight of them First of all, we got to thank Kevin and Delaney and believing in me, giving me an opportunity to do this again. And uh, this is really truck racing. This is fun. You told me at the media tour the old man wasn't done. You weren't kidding. I'm more wore out doing donuts, yee hauling and all that stuff than I was driving. This truck was flawless. Chevrolet and, you know, American Revolution. It, this thing's back. I mean, this is fun. I told Wally we were pretty good. I said it was driving like a Cadillac. And he goes, what does that mean? It was pretty slow in qualifying. I said it would be all right. And they adjusted it. And that second to last run, we got pretty free again. And uh, I think we went too far. And he put it right back to where it was at. So. What were your thoughts about green, white, checkered, knowing Bobby Labonte and Bobby Hamilton and some of those drivers right on your tail? This thing would really run uh, after about 20 laps, and it, it wouldn't go by itself. Uh, it has a pretty good body on it, and uh, it, it was I knew it was going to be a big wreck coming off the corner, and I, I got in there, and I hit the apron, and I got loose, and I got Dennis a little high, and it slowed him up just a little bit. And uh, Dennis. 
Heck, I mean, I seen it the other way around where Skinner spun last year, and I, I made it across the line. So we must both just got loose. I haven't seen the tape, but it was pretty cool. It was very cool. I don't know who to thank. Uh, Yardman, Snap-on, everybody. I mean, it, it takes a lot, and it, it's pretty cool. Pop, I'll be home. Congratulations. It took a lot from the driver, too. You guys remember a couple of moves he made there on Hamilton down the backstretch, right up on his bumper and shot to the inside. Ron Hornaday in victory lane once again in the Craftsman Truck Series. Last time Hornaday was in victory lane was back in 98. Look at Mesa that. Marin, and you look at how close that finish was for this only the third race of the season for the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. Can it get better? We're going to find out. We've got 22 more races to check it out. Anytime you're working on your race truck, you can get yourself into some pretty tight situations. And with a regular drill, it just takes up too much space. A lot of times there's places you just can't get to unless you've got this, Craftsman's new 3 8 inch electric drill. You'll notice this is all the area that it takes up because the handle goes this direction. What I really like about it is you can switch directions with your finger. You don't even have to lay the drill down to do it. This thing will get you in places you could never go with a regular drill. Speed Channel's coverage of the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series post-race show is presented by Craftsman. We go back trackside to Wendy Venerini. Thanks, Rick. Just when you thought the finish from 2004 could not be outdone, Bobby Labonte proved us wrong. Bobby, what an awesome finish, just a little bit short at the start-finish line. Yeah, I tell you what, it was uh, was a little short. I thought I had a good run off of four, and it went, which I did, but, you know, just uh, we get side by side in these things. It just, just slowed my momentum down, I guess, and it gave him a little boost, and he got a little freer than I did. I might have been a little tight or something like that, but um, the guys in the Chevrolet Silverado truck did a great job. We got uh, Phil Vassar on the hood, and the Nashville Music City Chevrolet was uh, was awesome. You know, we, uh, we, we had a lot of uh, ex excavating tonight, or whatever you want to call it, through the grass, and uh, you know, just uh, pretty exciting. But, uh, you know, came back there and just uh, had a good run on him there at the end and just uh, came up a little short. I know you run a lot of races outside of Cup just for fun, one of them being the truck race. Are you running any more with us this year? Uh, well, we're going to Martinsville uh, here in a couple weeks. That was our plan. And, uh, you know, we're trying to put a deal together on a few more. And, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. But uh, I think we, we penciled in six if we can get it done. And, uh, you know, we got to get some money to do that, though. Sure, Bobby Labonte will find that and find his way to Victory Lane by the end of the year, folks. Bobby Labonte wanting to run more of the trucks. And after a finish like that, I think he'd want to run full time if he could. Ron Hornaday continuing to celebrate in victory lane. In celebration of the 10th anniversary of the truck series, we present the toughest NASCAR Craftsman truck series moments made possible by Craftsman, the official tools of NASCAR. Moment 23 is about many moments. It was 26 and now 27. That's how many wins Ron Hornaday Jr. has in his truck series career and stands atop the all time wins list. Ronnie's winning ways began in 95 and driving for Dale Earnhardt Sr. He picked up two championships. His last win came in 2002 at the Miami Homestead Speedway before this most recent win. And now Ron Hornaday continues his winning ways in Atlanta as he holds the trophy for the World Financial Group 200. Ron Hornaday, 27 wins on his career. Welcome back. We're just outside of Atlanta at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Ron Hornaday Jr. celebrating his 27th victory in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. Tonight's Mobile One move of the race is brought to you by the new high endurance oils from Mobile, official lubricants of NASCAR. Let's take a look at the entire last lap because that would have to be the move of the race. Well, as they shoot down into turn one, Phil, you had to feel like Bobby was going to be able to make a run around the outside of, of uh, Hornaday just because of the draft. He was able to draft on him down the straightaway, run to the high side, and right here they could have crashed. Hornaday decided to give him room. He gave him room there. You, you thought that maybe he would have blocked him, but Bobby had such momentum here. But look, when he gets right side by side, he gets to the big wall of air. It slows his momentum, as he said. He's got a good run off the corner. It was a mistake by Hornaday as he entered three. He hit the apron. Sparks went everywhere. Lost the momentum. But when he exited turn four, he kept that thing on the floorboard. He was loose. That's fast. He got sideways. He didn't lift. And he won it by a fender. 
Mobile one move of the race, Ron Hornaday, eight one thousandths of a second in front of Bobby Labonte. We go to the third place finisher, Bobby Hamilton, standing by with Wendy. Bobby Hamilton overcame misfortune in true champion style. Bobby, you sure had a fast truck at the end of the night, but there's a reason why you weren't so good on the restarts at the end of the race. Uh, first, I cut a tire down, and they got us lap down. Had to work and get that back, and then I tore the transmission out on the restart. So I only had third and fourth, and a lot of guys worked with me that started behind me to give me a little time to get going. That was pretty nice, and that's the beauty part about this series. Everybody sort of has cooperation with one another, but it was a cool, a cool race again in Atlanta. Last year, the deal was Skinner, myself, and then Bobby and Ron right there at the end. I had a bird's eye view for it. I just wish I could have got going with them. I think it would have been a heck of a finish, Sam. Bobby Hamilton is off to a great start in 2005, coming home first, second, and third in our first three races. Let's take a look at the unofficial results for the Atlanta 200. Ron Hornaday up front, Bobby Labonte coming home second. Great top five for Dennis Setzer and David Starr. Ted Musgrave has his worst finish of the year, sixth. And Robert Huffman raced Darrell's truck into the top ten. Good run for Robert. Terry Cook got a good top ten run on, finished ninth. Todd Bodine lost a wheel on pit road, had to back up, put it back on, still came home, finished 12th. Robert Presley got the free pass a couple of times and wound up with the top 20 finish. You see Bill Lester there in 21st. He's ahead of Shiggy down in 27th, and Mike Carmen rounds out the top 30. Rick Sh Crawford with the cut tire or whatever that was that sent him into the wall, but a uh, bad night for him again in Atlanta. Ron Hornaday getting ready to autograph his toolbox as the winner of the Atlanta Motor Speedway race. Speed Channel's coverage of NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series post-race show is brought to you by Craftsman, celebrating 10 years tough for the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. Chevy had a great night tonight, finishing third and or fourth and fifth, two Chevrolet drivers standing by with Wendy. Thanks, Rick. First, we'll start with Dennis Setzer. Dennis, you look like you adjusted on your truck all night long. Yeah, Eric and the guys done some great jobs, some adjustments on the on our Silverado. Got pretty good that last 20 laps right there. Finally got pretty racy after the night, but uh, I'm proud of these guys. We had some great stops all night. The guys worked really hard, and uh, a few good adjustments helped. Now, David Starr, looks like the high groove might have been the place to be, but you didn't run the high groove tonight. Oh, my, you know, my Chevy Silverado wouldn't work good on the high side. We was working the bottom, but we thought we had to lead right there, going, got underneath Rick Crawford, and Hornaday got me right there. Then somebody tucked underneath me and got me loose. But what a heck of a race. The NASCAR, the fans seen a heck of a race tonight, and uh, it was fun for my seat. Just wish we would have finished a little bit better, but not a bad finish. All right, a great finish, a great night, and a great night for the Chevy, Chevy Silverados. Rick? Thank you, Wendy. We take a look at the Ford Point standings. Bobby Hamilton, with his consistency, stays up front. He's had a first, a second, and a third place finish already this season. A lot of strong veterans up front there. You see longtime veterans in the top six, Matt Crafton in seventh. And Bobby Hamilton deserves this point lead. He's raced from the back three races. He's been laps down. Didn't look like he had a prayer, yet at the end of the race, he was right there. Finished first, second, and third in the three races this year. Track side will be coming up immediately following at 11.30 p.m. Eastern. I like right to watch those. Atlanta. I like to watch those cats and see what they got to say. Our next race takes place April 9th. That's Martinsville a week from, or three weeks from tomorrow. You heard Bobby Labonte say that he would be a part of that event as well. Um, crazy race in Atlanta. It's always fun to watch them beat and bang in Martinsville, though. Well, we go back to the roots, the short track racing that the truck series was more or less born on. Ron Hornaday, 21 different tracks he has claimed victories at. Tonight, there were 13 different lead changes between nine different leaders. We saw well, trouble on pit road. We saw trouble on the racetrack. Bobby Bonnie made a trip through the grass on the infield. Rick Crawford looked like he had the race won with 10 to go. Not, not to be. Ron Hornaday, a part of one of the greatest finishes in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. 